Welcome to KJ Badminton. It is time for us to talk about part two of pitfalls for badminton players. So what we have done part one earlier last week, and it is very important for us to continue the chapter because it's, we have only done like half of it. So the second half is coming up so far. So in this chapter or in this video, we will get into the pitfalls that's critical for badminton players who is serious about their journey, who is serious about making advancement in their career as a badminton player. So you will be able to learn a few pitfalls that I have gone through together, not just myself, but my together with my son and players around or the parents around that I've shared and they have shared to me also. So let's get right into it. Let me get the slide up. There we go. Go. You gotta excuse me, still a pretty newbie in life. Um, there we go. Let's jump into it. So in part one, we have actually done we have actually done a few sections, a few of the categories. I have generally classified all pitfalls into eight categories. So we have talked about four of them, which is the early childhood conditioning pitfall, we, which is the teen years pride pitfall, which is meant for 13 years old and above. And of course, we have talked about the teenager's social life and the food intake. If you're interested on those topics, please look it up into the from the KJ Badminton channel. We'll get on to the next pitfalls that we're supposed to get to, which is a player's character. The first player's character's pitfall I want to call is hot tempo. Badminton at a higher level requires a lot of patience, especially when you are meeting a very high level player. You would never be able to score in the first two, three, four, shots that's in a rally so not until certain timing comes and you find the opportunity then only you go for it so that requires a lot of patience not just that and throughout the whole game of throughout the whole match of three games you might it might last up to like one one and a half hour you never know in this whole game itself the whole match itself a lot of things will happen and if you continue to throw hot tempo into certain situations, that's going to be very, very difficult to win. So the first sub bullets here that I have is actually throwing temper when certain things happen. Players could be irritated by certain small things. So it might not be ideal environment in the, uh, the game itself. It might not be ideal environment for the court itself. Players might just get, certain players might just get irritated, certain players might just, you know, I, I just don't like this place, or I couldn't control uh, the, the birdie this round, and so on. They get frustrated, and they are not into the game and not putting up their performance at peak, therefore easily losing out to the opponent. So that is very, very critical, simply because we, remember, we will not be able to control everything in a badminton match. But we can control ourselves. If you can control your tempo, if you can manage your own emotion, that would be absolutely a critical factor to become a champion. If that part is short and you know you are irritated or you're easily irritated by certain things, please remind yourself, do not let that happen. When you get into a court, you get into a match, you know certain things are going to happen. Hey, that's the time you need to control your emotion even stronger. And not to mention that, hey, there are certain players, it's absolutely good at the, your, let's say, for example, your opponent will just come into the match, will purposely irritate you with certain small little actions. For example, they don't want to pick up the shadows and push it up over to you. For example, they keep insisting on the shadow change. For example, they would just keep delaying your serve all these small things, hey, as a top level or high level badminton player, please control your emotion and get away, focus 
on the rally and on the point. So that is the first bullet on what I really want to share with you. Hot tempo in badminton, it's going to ruin you. So be aware of that pitfall and make sure that you know how to handle your own emotion. The second sub bullet in hot tempo is about cannot accept certain losses of points. There are certain players, which I've seen many, got into the court, get in there, start playing the game. And eventually what really happened is there's a rally that's ongoing and eventually they, the, the player lost that one point. He got so frustrated over it and lost the whole composure. The whole rhythm is gone. The whole, the whole idea is gone and he couldn't win the match anymore. So that is absolutely not okay. So we need to be careful not to fall into that pitfall and accept losses. That's fine because what you want to win is the match. It's not only that one point. Let it go, leave it behind and focus on what you need to do. And it usually take years to mature in this kind of controlling, emotional control. It is very, very important for you to learn from each incident. And of course, better still, there would be somebody who is guiding you. For example, may that be your parent, may that be your coach, may that be your own peers or your uh, friends that's actually sitting behind and give you guidance. Hey, look, 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 you're going to lose it. Okay, focus, focus, bring it back, come back, come back. So those are the real help that you can get immediately on that instance. And of course, after the game, you will need to go and understand what really happened and examine yourself, tell yourself what needs to improve to make sure that this is going not going to happen again. Still, in the player's character pitfall, lack of discipline to get the training right. And of course, uh, to a large extent, coaches can only ask you to do so much. If you are lack of discipline to do it yourself, it's going to be really, really challenging. And that discipline has to be coming from your own, not a force from your coach. It cannot happen in that manner. Lack of interest to learn or understand the knowledge in badminton. Certain players, they would want to win a game. They're serious about their badminton journey, but they are not having any interest on how or what to do to get a high quality shot. So that itself, it's a very, very big topic because if you do not have the interest to go research, to go find out, to do homework, to do additional activity, to supplement your training, you're going to lag behind. You do not have that extra initiatives go drive for knowledge. For example, reviewing your game rigorously, not just do it when the coach wants to do it with you. So what does that mean? You are not interested? Only your coach is interested? Is your coach playing or you are playing? Do you want to win or your coach wants to win? Right. So you need to ask yourself if there is lack of discipline to do certain activities that you need to do, it's not good. Okay, that's pretty sad sign that's happening. We, move, we now move on to the next category, which is uh, player's attitude. Do not understand, appreciate, accept the need of real effort and hard work. This is a really, really big topic. As simple as you don't do it, you don't get it. This is in the sports world. Badminton is one of the sports. And in fact, this is really true for all sports, not just limited to badminton. If you do not go do your running, you don't get the stamina that you want. You always, if you always give excuses not to do certain exercises because you don't like it, you will not benefit from that exercise so that you would move your body or your physical condition to the next level. Always need to remind or force to do certain training. So that, is, uh, again, is a lack of, to a certain extent, it's lack of discipline. So the attitude itself that I'm trying to illustrate here, it's willingness to go into the hard work, willingness to go into the level of people that they don't, other people are not doing it. What does that mean? 
we know a lot of friends in um that knows uh the legend Li Chong Wei. And guess what? It is it is actually well known to many people that Li Chong Wei is famous of going extra mile. If the coach is asking the whole crew or the whole trainee team to do a five kilometer jog, Li Chong Wei will do an extra 30%, 30%, 40%. Depends on his condition. So go so it, it goes the same on physical uh, activity, uh, the exercises, the training, the hours, everything that you talk about, he goes the extra mile. He doesn't stop there unless he need to. So that is the legend Li Chong Wei. Same is called up here. If you do not have the attitude to win, do not have the attitude to invest in your own, to make yourself stronger, you would have challenges to go a long way. So that is actually a big no-no. And we definitely, we need to understand why. And if you don't have the intention to go far and hard, you might just might, might as well just, just call it a day and say that, hey, you know, let's do something else. But if you are into the badminton sports, you really want to be part of the winning team, do go the extra mile. Do not stop at a simple instruction, pushed for extra mile. Of course, you know, everything that we pushed has a limit and, and you need to know where that limit is, okay? So I just want to call out that attitude, it's key. Attitude, it's super, super important. Lack of initiative, I have uh, briefly called it out earlier. Initiatives to invest in, on yourself, in, in initiatives to review your own game, initiatives to um, understand how a point is lost, initiatives to view other players' game, initiatives to go find out the knowledge, why is this condition happening, and so on. There's so many things that we can do to make ourselves stronger as a feminine player. But what are you doing? that others are not, so that you are actually a, a step ahead. Same goes to what are others doing that you are not, you are a step below. So again, it is very, very key for us to drive ourselves, to set initiatives, to review the program with the coaches, to understand what it takes to go to the next level. Is that periodization or is that a stamina push or is that different, different conditions or is that joining more games? So you need to understand where you are what are you trying to obtain? And then only you will understand what is the next best step. Lack of interest to learn or understand the knowledge in badminton. So we briefly talk about that just now. And of course, lack of discipline to get the training right. Attitude in the training is bad. I'm willing to go all out. This is probably the largest line that I want to talk about. In any training that you attend, if you do not go all out, when I say when I say all out, I actually mean that speed in the court, the movement from location A to location B. If you do not have that speed to return, pop the maximum speed that you come back here or at least the best speed that you can use, you will not be able to repeat that in a match. If you can't do it in the training, you can't do it in a match. You can't do it in a match, you cannot win. So as simple as that. So that is the very first thing that I picked it up when my boy get into a serious coach. Okay, um, when we are attached to one of the coaches that we are uh, starting to learn the most from badminton, which is super knowledgeable. Um, he is telling us that first thing, check your attitude before you come into uh, the badminton court. The minute that you step into the court, your attitude has to be super aggressive. May that be a spin net, may that be a lobbing, may that be smashing, may that be defending. After each of the shots, you have to return to the court. That part, it's critical, it's key. If you're just taking your own sweet time, you know, it, it is slow and steady. I'll make sure I come back in time. Uh, so long I'm moving, I'm fine. That's not fine. That is not badminton because that is for a leisure player. That's for fun. But if you're 
going in to win, you need to go all out at max speed or at least the best speed. We're moving on to the next category, which is the injury pitfall. This is critical, guys. This is very, very critical. The last thing you need as a player is getting injury. It's very demoralizing, number one. It's time wasting and it's going to be super critical um, to continue your training. If you don't continue your training, others are continuing their training. If they, others are continuing their training, that means that they're actually moving ahead and you are actually falling behind. Not that you're really, really falling behind. You might be, maybe you're just stagnant there, but others are really moving ahead. So injury, it's critical. Do not, do not allow injury to come. So prevention, it's always better than cure. Of course, you really got it already. Then we talk about this in a separate topic, in a separate video, but preventing injury is critical. Warm up and warm down. Many players, especially those junior players, when they do not understand the knowledge, it is they are doing lesser than what they need. That's the killer. The killer is you don't warm up enough. You get into a, a training and when the coach is actually pushing you, you got injury. You, you can get injury easily. Uh, and same goes to warm down. You have played a really hard game and you didn't warm it down. And that's it. You wrap it up. You just wipe out the sweat and go home continue to do that for a longer period of time, you would see certain part of your muscles are getting hardened. And of course, the hardened muscle, it's where the problem will start. When you get into a cord and uh, under certain stress condition, there you go, you are injured. Okay, so very, very important. Younger players, Push too hard without building the right muscle set. Okay, this is very common. This is very common, especially when they're in the age, at least based on the Malaysia environment here. I, I still remember the most injury that Tim is happening. He is, it's around his age of 10 or 11. Oh my goodness, this is just crazy. It is crazy, crazy, crazy. Because every now and then you go see a sports injury. Uh, specialists, you go see physiologists, you go see this, you go see that. It's just crazy, right? So it's like 30% of the time he's out. Or, I mean, that's like peak time. Um, how do we prevent that? You need to start going into some exercise building. You need to do more physical training rather than uh, more court time because court time is very stressful. So it, it is, again, down to building the physical condition before the court time comes. So, um, what I'm referring me, it is very important for us to uh, build the muscle set before we push so hard for the, the the training or the match or whatnot. So, focus. You go into the gym, find a gym instructor to help you out, and focus on building your muscle. I have. Uh, concrete data, I wouldn't say data, it is observation and history based on Kim's encounter. Once he has gone into the, the gym session, hey, first thing first, uh, gym session is not like we go there and do weightlifting every day. It's not, it's not like that at all. It is, about, let's say for example, building your calf muscle, building your uh, hamstring muscle, building your whatnot, whatever that it is. <laughs> It is critical to build those uh, before you push really hard for it. And uh, this is really a good, good tips for in avoiding injury. Depending on the age you are, depending on how aggressive you play the game, uh, you need to build the muscle before the game comes. So if you just go straight into the game before the building the muscle, it, it is going to hurt you more than helping you. Trust me, and a lot of our parents have been through this uh, it is just so rampant to a point where every time I see a kid got injury, I, I'm just so sad because they do not know how to avoid that pitfall. So again, um, focused on building the muscle set, focus on your physical condition before pushing the game too hard.
Okay, this is a good one. Uh, I'll probably make a video on this because not many people talk about this, but it is a must do. I can guarantee you almost that if you do not follow this, you will get your turn for the injury because everyone around us has got gotten the ass. Either you can actually do the split. Split means, hey, your leg open up all the way. That's actually a horizontal split. Um, there's a left, right split. That's actually a front back split, right? So you need to do both. Not 100%. You, you, I mean, nice to be 100% done, but at least you need to do up to like 80%. Right, eighty percent. That will actually loosen up the muscle in in a hamstring, um, in your thigh. And if you do not do that, I guarantee you, it's a matter of time. Maybe be eleven year old, maybe twelve, thirty, fourteen. It will come. For every single serious badminton player I've talked to, either they can actually do the split, which is you know showing that how flexible they are in their leg movement, or there you go, they've got injury. And this injury will not be fun because this injury will take you months, i say that again, months to get out. And Tim got it. The serious one was about half a year, but subsequently it took another one more year to fully cure it until he actually exercised his leg and do the split all the way. So it's serious, it has delayed his progress significantly and of course you know it is not good at all just that just simply because the muscles and the hamstring is too tight okay so again and again i couldn't say i couldn't um say enough this is absolutely critical which i will make a video and hopefully more will get to benefit from this so take this out understand that Spend two, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes in a day just to do the split, and you will get there. You get it. Everybody gets there. I'm getting there. Okay, slowly. Uh, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I'm still trying, right? So be careful uh, of this before. And one more people is do not engage with physiotherapists. Physiotherapist is your friend. Physiotherapist assess your condition. Physiotherapists will need to will they they will assess the condition and where they will actually help you to do sports massage. Uh, I, I'll give you one example. I'll give you one example how important physiotherapists is. If you if you see some of the professional players that's going out for competition, uh, I'll take one example. Um, Malaysian player Li Zhiyang. He he might be. Um, he has, he has a crew when he's going out for competition. And of course, out of the crew, uh, there's one professional physiotherapist. And of course, that is never, that will never be missing. So you can do without a coach, you know, not that I'm asking you to do that. Uh, it's possible. Uh, you can do without um, a, a, a nutritionist, um, but you cannot do without a physiotherapist. Um, you can, but you would just certain part of your body would just uh, in in a different condition, and uh, eventually you you would not be able to uh, be at your best again in in those matches that you're going in. So physiotherapist is super important. Yeah, it, it costs money. There's some investment there, but it is absolutely necessary. Doesn't really matter how hardworking you are on your warm up and warm down. Uh, there are certain parts of body you might just miss it, and physiotherapist is there to help to make sure that you are at a tip-top condition to compete and win, okay? Now, I want to come to the last category and it is the most important category. This is what we call the three final acid tests. I, if you do not pass these three tests, chances for you to make to the public is super slim. What are those? Let's get into it. Number one, which is already on the screen, self-realization. What is that? Self-improvement drive. What is that? It is no other than you know what you're doing. You get a shot placed and you are either happy with it or not happy with it. 
immediately, I'm saying immediately, you place that shot. Let's just say that you're really happy and that's fine. No, no issue at all. Let's say that, just say that it's not super happy. You say that, oh my God, this quality is not so good. And you need to know why. Is that your hand? Is that the drop? Is that the shadow? Is that the racket? You need to know why. And the next time you come in, it could be in the same rally still. You need to take it with higher quality. You need to do it with a lot of self-realization. That's not limited to just match time, but also at the same time in training, you need to know why. Why is that so? Let's say, for example, you would just do a lift to the back court and eventually you realize, hey, what's going on? Why the shots are keep going up? And you need to do the adjustment. You need to be able to do the adjustment on the spot, the next shot when you are doing the same lift. If you are not able to correct yourself immediately, I'm sorry, you will not be able to make it to the top. That's what I call self-realization and immediately self-correct. Very, very critical. So I, this is a more uh, immediate things. It's in front of you. You need to quickly go do it and get it, get it done. But there's also a, a longer term, let's say, for example, your tempo issues that we talk about, uh, let's say, the discipline issue you talk about, if your self-realization is not there for driving yourself to move forward, that's a pitfall. That's a major acid test. So you should know what is it by now. Um, and of course, you know, very, very important. If you need help on this, go to the coach. Understand from the coach. Observe the top players. You will tell. You pay really, really close attention on how they play the game. You will realize that, hey, this shot is out. Next time they come back in, they will not do that again, or they, they actually will improve the shot quality. So, number one, that's the acid test number one. Acid test number two, too talented and ignore physical requirement. Yes, you, you read this correct. In badminton, they are players that's born with the talent. I'll say that again. They are players that's born with the talent. And those players, since young, since super young, and of course with certain level of training, which most people go through, uh, most player goes through, they will have the ability to handle a shuttle to perfection doesn't really matter what the situation is. That actually means that their hand skill uh, or, or their, their anticipation skill, their read of opponent skill, it's a knock higher compared to average players. You can work as hard as you, you, you can, you can move a little bit, but they're always a tap forward. Because of that talent, they know they have talent. They are winning games. They are Standing out doesn't really matter how the shutter comes or what the shutter speed is. They will actually have that ability to control the shutter's return back so that they would um, have higher chances to win the point. So saying that, this group of players, they are super strong. Two thumbs up. But because of their talent, they are telling themselves they don't need to work so hard. and. I'm very sorry to tell you that the work, the word doesn't work that way. If you have the talent, you need to work extra hard because you have the chance, a, a, a more realistic chance of making it to the top compared to others. But if you do not have the talent, you know you need to work hard, hey, work hard. And most players to, on the top work hard and got there. But they are a lot of players. Years. I would say a lot, okay, they are very small percentage, but uh, I've seen a few. Uh, they are just super, no matter how the, the situation is, they will be able to handle it and they, they will be able to handle it with a lot of surprises. You never thought that a shot is going to be returning that way, and but they can do it. These are called talent. But again, if you are ignoring the physical requirement, there you go. It's end of the game because it doesn't matter how good your hand is, 
people will beat you up because of a stamina. So again, do not allow your talent to overshadow you. It is you as a whole, not just one aspect as a whole that can actually bring yourself to the top. So very, very important to make sure that those are actually taken care of all aspects. Okay. We come to the third and the last acid test. This is relevant to sleeping time. In today's world, it's too busy. To today's world, it's absolutely uh, polluted by social media, by uh, your handphone, by games, by videos, by contents available everywhere. How do you discipline yourself to sleep early so that you can wake up early and train early? The sleeping part early is not just about waking up early. Everybody needs recovery time. And the recovery time is done best when you sleep early. And of course, especially growing time, growing time, in, it, it, that, that certain part of your brain that's actually released hormone, growth hormone. And that process is happening at every day, 11 p.m. You like it or you don't, it is going to happen. So you better be at sleep, especially when you're a teenagers. You better be at sleep at 10 o'clock so that at 11 o'clock, that process can kick in smoother. So if you miss that window, if you're continuously sleeping at 11, 30, 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. every day, every day, so you are at disadvantage. Whereas others are having a quicker recovery, a quicker growth, um, because of the sleeping pattern. This itself, it's a real killer. If you are not able to do this, you are at great disadvantage. So do yourself a favor, switch off your handphone or set an alarm or whatever, get to your bed if you're serious about your badminton journey. So with all that, I have uh, concluded all my slides today. And these are all the pitfalls that uh, I have listed down total of eight categories. If you are keen about uh, to, to know about the whole episode, please also make sure you watch um, the, the video that is uh, in part one. This is actually the part two of it. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And we we'll definitely meet again.